In a somewhat unexpected move, HP recently updated their Spectral line to include a rather unusual 2-in-1 convertible. It has a leather design, it has a premium look and feel, and it really looks like one gorgeous laptop. I took delivery of it about two days ago, and I've been putting it through its paces ever since. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my unboxing and first look at the HP Spectre Folio. Coming up. Want to see more videos like this? Well, why not hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit that notification icon. This way you'll be alerted every time I post a new video. And don't forget to check me out on my social media, especially Twitter, because that's where I post all the latest updates. And today's video is brought to you by Zero and Nine, your one-stop shop for Windows 10 professional OEM keys, Microsoft Office keys, as well as Steam CD keys, and so much more. All the links below for more information and where you can get these great discounts. And also a special discount code for my viewers. The HP Spectre Folio comes with a 13.3-inch IPS multi-touch display. It's a Full HD display with the processor of either the Core i5-8200Y or the Core i7-8500Y. It's a fanless design and it comes with 8GB of DDR3 RAM and storage options starting at 256GB up to 2TB of PCIe NVMe SSD storage, which is not expandable as there is no microSD card slot. You can also get it with Gigabit LTE, which is the model I have. It's an additional $100 at checkout. It comes in a premium leather casing and it has a very interesting design. This is not your typical two-in-one convertible. We'll talk more about that in just a little bit. But enough of the specs. Let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Now, packaging is very premium with this, as we'd expect no less from the Spectre line. Now, opening the lid, you're greeted by a very simple diagram on the different modes you can put this device into. And holding the unit for the first time, I am struck by just how nice this leather casing is. It's the cognac leather, and to me, gives a very classy, very premium look. It comes with a 65 watt charger, it's pretty compact and I love the fact that it has a braided cable which is very durable and won't snag rather easily. That's good. And it uses USB to charge this device which is always good. You get your extension cable as well as a USB-C to A adapter. There is no full size USB port, it's USB-C only on this. And you have some documentation and warranty information as well. They give you a leather pen loop which you'll need as they do include the HP Active Pen in the box. Now it supposedly has some pretty good pressure sensitivity, uses one quadruple A battery and uses the Entrig pen technology. You also get a few extra pen tips as well. I'd have to say this is a pretty nice unboxing experience, very clean and very nice. Now this is a very interesting device with three main ways you can use this. You can use it obviously in laptop mode. You could also put it into sort of like a media mode where just the trackpad is showing or you could even put it into tablet mode as you see here. Great for use with the pen and taking notes in a classroom or in a meeting. On the right side, you have two USB-C Thunderbolt 3 ports and they do support four lanes. So theoretically, you can connect it to an external GPU, although the bottleneck will be the processor. So I'm not sure if that's a good idea. And on the left side is a USB-C port as well as a 3.5 millimeter headset jack. And there's an LED indicator light letting you know the device is charging. Flipping the screen up reveals your SIM card slot. That's where you put your nano SIM for your LTE. And I have tested it with my Verizon and Project 5 Sims all working well. Now I'm really impressed with the display so far. It's a 13.3 inch Full HD IPS multi-touch display with a resolution of 1920 by 1080. That's 166 pixels per inch, but it's a very sharp Full HD display. And it has the hallmarks of a very good display. You're looking at some very deep black, some very vibrant colors. The brightness is very good as well. I'm going to test it in my full review, give you all the benchmarks when it comes to this display. But suffice it to say, so far, my initial impressions are this is an excellent Full HD display. 
Now the unit I chose is the Core i7-8500Y. Now the Y processor won't be as powerful as say the U processors. However, for productivity, for web browsing, opening multiple tabs, I had no issues. The eight gigabytes of DDR3 RAM was more than adequate for the type of use that I use this for. Now watching movies, Netflix, YouTube, and the like is a pleasure on that display. And the processor had no issues when it came to that. Now AAA gaming, this is not really something that this computer is made for, but I think you already know that. Now you can do some gamings I would do some light window store gamings and some older titles maybe on lower settings again I will do a full review and give you the benchmarks coming very soon but suffice it to say it's a pretty snappy device overall pretty good for productivity and consuming media now my first impressions of the keyboard are actually positive. It has 1.3 millimeters of key travel, which is a bit on the shallow side, but I thought it was overall comfortable to type on. I didn't feel like my fingers were bottoming out, had good tactile feedback, and I like the fact that it has two stages of backlighting, making it great for getting work done, potentially in a dark or dimly lit environment. So that's pretty good. And an added benefit of having a soft leather deck is that it's really comfortable for your wrist to rest on that while you're typing. And in the less than 24 hours I've been using this device, the touchpad is actually okay. Two finger scrolling seems to work really well. Windows 10 just as work as advertised. Give me a week, I'll give you my final conclusions, but initial impression so far, it's okay. Now, another thing I'm pretty interested to see is how the pen will fare. Now, I just recently took a look at the new Surface Pro 6 and the Surface Pen with that device. My full review, by the way, will be posted the next day or two, so stay tuned for that. But getting back to this pen, I'm actually pretty happy with it. Now, I've only used it less than 24 hours, and it seems like the pressure sensitivity is pretty good. Palm rejection works well. Good for taking some notes in a classroom or in a meeting, and certainly when you want to sketch out some artwork. I will do further testing of that in my full review, so stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, know this, that this pen is actually working pretty well. So I'm glad to see that. And I'm also glad to see they do include this at that price point. Now this has Bang & Olufsen branded speakers and they're actually pretty good. They get somewhat loud, but they don't have great bass. But a lot of these thin and light laptops never have that. Let's hear it in action to give you an example of just how it sounds. And it's good to see a 3.5 millimeter headset jack. In my initial testing, it does not have any interference. There's no static. Overall, sound was pretty good when I connected my wired headphones. And I know a lot of you are wondering, well, how's the front-facing camera? Well, that's a good question. Let's see it in action. So this is the front-facing camera on the HP Spectre Folio 13. It's a 1080p, 30 frames per second, a 16 by 9 camera. Uh, it's certainly good for Skype. It's certainly good for video conferencing. Not the best I've ever seen, but certainly not the worst. Let me know in the comment section below, what do you think about it? I, I am curious to know. And it's a Windows Hello camera. So if you want to log in using your face recognition, you have that option. Setup was easy, and I thought it worked pretty well. The HP Spectre Folio has a 6-cell 54.28 watt-hour battery and they claim up to 17 hours and 15 minutes of mixed use on the Core i5 model and they claim 13 hours and 45 minutes on the Core i7 model. I don't believe those figures will add up. Actually, I've never seen that on a Y processor before. It's more like 7 to 8 hours, which wouldn't be too bad as long as we can get all-day battery life. In the 24 hours or so that I've been using this, that's about what I'm getting, 7 and a half to eight hours at most. So far, my initial impressions are positive. I know it's a bit pricey, but I like its excellent display, premium leather casing, fanless design, decent performance out of that Core Y processor, and I like the fact they include the HP Active Pen in the box. But of course, this is not a perfect laptop. There are a few things that stick out to me that are not so great. For instance, changing to the different modes is a little bit kludgy, a little bit clumsy. And there's no micro SD car slot, so there's no storage expansion. And of course, this is very expensive. But there are no real deal breakers so far. But stay tuned for my full review to find out if this is something I think you should buy. 
So what do you think about the HP Spectre Folio? It's a gorgeous 13 inch laptop. I love this gorgeous leather design. It's soft, it's supple, it's actually really nice. And it's a very premium looking design as well. Now, as far as the Y processor concerned, I'm looking forward to putting it through its paces and bring you my final results in the full review. But suffice it to say, the Core i7 is actually performing pretty well. HP is claiming that this will get about 13 hours and 45 minutes. This is the Core i7 and seven, over 17 hours on the Core i5. And I've never seen the Y processor get that kind of battery life. So I'm not expecting it. What I'm seeing in the last day or so is about seven and a half to eight hours, which isn't bad for a Y processor. I'm actually thinking it's pretty good. But of course I will test the battery amongst everything else in my full review. I'll test the display. I'll, of course I'll test performance. But so far I'm rather impressed. Now the SSD they're using in this, it's an NVMe. SSD, it's PCIe, and it's getting some good reads and writes, as you saw from the benchmark that I did display. So I want to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. What do you think of the HP Spectre Folio? What do you think of its leather design? It's actually really nice. I think you need to see it in person to really appreciate it. What do you think about its unusual design in terms of putting it into the different modes? It's a little bit kludgy. It's a little bit clumsy, but it does get the job done. Now, overall looks are really good on this, but again, performance may be another story. We'll see in the full review. So please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, on Twitter, Instagram, and of course my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.